Hey, it's Joe, and this is the sixth installment in the Quant Trading in Futures video series. Today's topic will be machine learning and parameter optimization. We'll begin with a high-level overview of machine learning. Obviously, machine learning is a very complex field. It would be impossible to go through all its details in this short video, but we want to go through machine learning at the conceptual level so that you understand it enough to be able to understand its application to quant trading. So with that, what is machine learning? It's all about learning the relationship between two data sets. We'll call them X and Y. Mathematically, we want to learn the function F such that F of X equals Y. And we do this using a machine learning algorithm with hyperparameters H1 to HN, and this is how we learn F. Some examples of machine learning algorithms are the neural network, the random forest, the support vector machine, and what these algorithms do is they take the hyperparameters and they spit out a function f. What's a hyperparameter? An example of a hyperparameter for a neural network, for instance, is the number of layers. So these are all just inputs to the machine learning algorithm that determines how the machine learning algorithm is going to determine what the function f will be in order to predict y. So how do we know if our machine learning algorithm is doing a good job? We need some method of evaluating it. And we do it with the loss function L. L measures how different f of x is from y. If we have very good predictions, then f of x will be very close to y, and so the loss function will give a very small value. If we have a bad model, then f of x will be very different from y, and so the loss function L will give a very large value. So we're trying to minimize L. So let's recap. f is written as a function of h1 through hn, and L is a function of f of x and its difference from y. So we can write L as a function of h1 through hn. If we vary the hyperparameters, then our machine learning algorithm is going to give us a different function f, and so f of x will be different, and so the difference between f of x and y will be different, meaning the output of our loss function will be different. So if you follow that chain of logic, you can simply write L as a function of h1 through hn. With that in mind, one of the primary goals in building a machine learning model is to choose hyperparameters h1 to hn in order to minimize the loss function L of h1 to hn. So this is the first of many different multivariate optimization problems we're going to be looking at throughout the remainder of this video series. It's very important to understand how this works. I've attached this visual of a bivariate optimization problem where the goal is to find the minimum of this three-dimensional surface. So it'll be helpful moving forward to keep this image in mind when we're talking about multivariate optimization. All right, so that's enough about machine learning for now. Let's get back to quant trading. As we've discussed previously, every trading strategy has parameters. And if you take the strategy's parameters and the strategy's trading rules, you can generate the return series for the strategy. And you can take the sharp ratio of that return series for the strategy. So analogous to what we discussed with writing the loss function as a function of the hyperparameters in a machine learning model, you can write the sharp function as a function of the trading parameters of a trading strategy. And the objective in trading parameter optimization is to choose these trading parameters t1 to tn in order to maximize the sharp function s of t1 to tn. So we have these two multivariate optimization problems. Choose the hyperparameters to minimize the loss and choose the trading parameters to maximize the sharp. How do we actually solve these optimization problems? The issue is that L and S are not explicit functions. That means we can't write these functions out on a piece of paper. We don't know the direct mapping between the hyperparameters and the loss. And we don't know the direct mapping between the trading parameters and the sharp. We can't take derivatives, so the methods of calculus won't work, which we would normally use in order to solve optimization problems such as these. And in fact, there is no analytic solution, so we'll require a numeric solution. By now, you're probably realizing that these two optimization problems are very similar in nature. And indeed, we can express them as equivalent problems. Generally speaking, this is a problem of choosing parameters p1 to pn to minimize some non-explicit function f of p1 to pn. In hyperparameter optimization, p1 to pn is set to h1 to hn, and f is set to l. And in trading parameter optimization, p1 to pn is set to t1 to tn, and f is set to negative s, because if we're minimizing the negative of a function, that is equivalent to maximizing the function. And so because we've expressed both these optimizations as equivalent problems, 
they'll have an equivalent solution. That means that we can apply the latest research in machine learning to solve a trading specific problem. There's a lot more literature out there on machine learning than there is on trading parameter optimization, but we can repurpose that research in order to solve this trading parameter optimization problem. And there are three solutions. They're all searches for the optimal parameter set, and they are the grid search, the random search, and the Bayesian search. The simplest and most straightforward approach to finding the optimal parameters is the grid search. The grid search is when you test every single parameter set in the entire parameter space. One upside of the grid search is it is easy to parallelize. Parallelization is when you have a task and you split it up into multiple different subtasks and you run each subtask on a different server in parallel. So they're done simultaneously, it ends up speeding everything up. A grid search is easy to parallelize because you simply break the parameter space into, for instance, 10 different subspaces, and you can run the function for each subspace over 10 different servers. So again, it ends up speeding everything up. For a grid search, the parameter space needs to be discrete because if it were continuous, you'd have an infinite number of parameter sets to evaluate, and that's not possible. And grid searches are good for a simple strategy and a small parameter space. A good way to think about it is that if it is feasible to do a grid search, you're going to want to do a grid search because by evaluating every single parameter set, it's truly painting the full picture. But in many cases, a grid search is not feasible. In those cases, you may want to use a random search. Random search is when you test every parameter set in a random subspace, the parameter space. So you can think of the random search as identical to the grid search, with the exception that rather than checking all parameter sets in the entire space, you're just doing it over a random subspace. The random search is easy to parallelize for the same reason the grid search is easy to parallelize. And for a random search, the parameter space can be continuous because you're not evaluating every single parameter set. So you can have an infinite number of parameter sets. And this is what we mean when we say that a parameter space can be continuous. Random searches are good for a complex strategy over a large parameter space. So a simple strategy, small parameter space, you're going to want to do the grid search because it paints the entire picture. But a complex strategy over a large parameter space, it's infeasible to do a grid search. So you're going to want to do a random search instead. And it is usually more efficient to do a random search over a large space than to do a grid search over a small space. So when you're creating your parameter space, one of the things you want to keep in mind is which search you're going to use. And rather than confining yourself to a small parameter space so that you can use a grid search, it's typically better to allow yourself to have a larger parameter space and then do a random search. One problem with both the grid search and the random search is that in both cases, they're selecting all the parameter sets ahead of time. There is no feedback between how a particular parameter set performs and the next parameter set you choose. A Bayesian search is one solution to this problem. The Bayesian search uses Bayes' theorem to adaptively select parameter sets based on past results. So it selects parameter sets in a much more efficient manner, and it uses feedback of past parameter sets. Bayesian search is difficult to parallelize for this exact reason. Because all the parameter sets aren't determined ahead of time, and instead they're determined adaptively based on the results of prior parameter sets, you can't easily split up the parameter space and run it all on different servers the way you could in the case of the grid search and the random search. The parameter space for a Bayesian search can be continuous, for the same reason that a random search can have a continuous parameter space. And the Bayesian search is the most efficient search if parallelization is not required. So if you can run your entire backtest on just one server, you'll almost always want to use the Bayesian search instead of a random search. But that isn't always feasible. If you have a very complex strategy over a very large parameter space, one solution is to use a random search in order to shrink the parameter space and then use a Bayesian search over the smaller parameter space. So use the random search to narrow down that parameter space to determine which parameter sets tend to be doing best. And then you refine that by using the Bayesian search over this shrunk down parameter space. So that's going to be it on machine learning and parameter optimization. Next time we're going to discuss portfolio optimization.